Hello and welcome back. Control engineering. Remember, last time we talked about the transfer function. We said there is one block, one system. It has a certain transfer function, usually derived by the big letter. And there is some, some input. And of course, there is some output. Okay. And we said the output is the input multiplied by this transfer function. We said this is all in the plus area yeah, and this s is complex variable. Okay. Now we want to know this is valid for linear time invariant systems and also non-reactive. This means the output is not firing back to the input. Okay. This is important because sometimes if whatever is inside here is only passive elements, so elements which are not producing power by themselves, then the next one is influencing the first one because it's draining power here and the power drain will change what is happening here. So keep this in mind. Yeah? That is not applicable in every, every uh, little detail. So what we want to do yeah? Let's say we do have one system, G1, and we do have another system, G2. And here we have the input, Xi, and here we have the output, Xo. How can we handle this? Okay. So here, this is XO2 and this XO2 is XI multiplied by G1 and here this is XI2 is the same. Yeah? So this means x this xo here, the total xo equals xi2 multiplied by g2. Yeah? And since these are the same, it's xi multiplied by g1 multiplied by G2. And if you want to substitute this with this, yeah, so that we have a total transfer function, then this transfer function is this. This is this G from S. Okay. So if we have a serial connection, serials, it's the multiplication of the two transfer functions. Okay. I guess that's, that's logical. Let's have a look what is happening if we do having a parallel. Okay. So we have now here G1, here we have G2, here we have a mixing point. We do have input xi. We do have an output again xo. Here, this here, this function here is 
xi multiplied by g1. This signal here is xi multiplied by g2. And this xo is the sum of both. Yeah. So this is xi multiplied by g1, this part, plus this part, plus xi multiplied by g2. Yeah. And now xi I can get out. Yeah. And here again we have this g s. Yeah. So if it's parallel, it's just the sum of these two, yeah, the total transfer function. Okay? Clear, I hope. Yeah. Please keep in mind that this is not valid, for instance, for passive networks, because a new part of the network is draining power here and will change this part of the network. This is only valid if really both systems are non-reactive. This means the output has no influence on the input or uh, the system itself. Okay. This is very important. If it's a minor change, then it's okay to do it like this, but we have to know, we have to, to think or keep in mind that this is not exactly true. If it's a major impact, we cannot use this type. So, what if we want to, to move something? Let's say we do have here G from S, yeah? and there is the, the input signal, and there is the output signal, and the out this output signal is XO1, yeah? and there is also a XO2. What if we want to move this point for whatever reason here. Then it would look like this. X01. This one, x01. This is xi multiplied by g of s. Here is xi again. And of course, x02 is also xi multiplied by g. So, if we want to move this in front, we have to add another transfer element. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move this backwards. So now, let's start with exactly this situation. Not exactly this situation, but kind of. I have here G1, I have here G2, and here are the outputs. XO1 and XO2. And I want to move this point backwards here. So here is xi. Now 
I have this G1. And what is coming out there is XO1. Okay, there is nothing changed. But now I have this. And how do we come to XO2? How do we reach that XO2 is not changed? Of course, we have to multiply with G2. G2, yeah. and we have to get rid of whatever mass G1 have added here. So we have to divide by G1. Okay. This dividing by G1 is cancelling what happened here. Okay. These two things are also the same. The same thing we can do with a mixing point. Same thing we can do with a mixing point. So let's say we do have here, I will use a new, new sheet because then we have, we have it a little bit more overview. So let's say we have here again a G. Then we do have here an input one. We do have here a mixing point, and out of this mixing point, there is the output coming. Okay. Here something was going out, and here we do have an XI2, which is added. And this mixing point, the task is to get this mixing point here in front. Okay. What do we have to do? What do we have to do? We do have this XI1. Then we do have the mixing point. Okay. Then whatever is coming out here passes this G and the output is XO. How to treat XI2? Yeah. XI2 would never run through G, but here it's running through G. Yeah. So what we have to do, XI2, what we actually have to do is already compensate this G by adding a new transfer element, 1 divided by G. This one will cancel this one for only this signal. Okay. This is how you get a mixing point forward. And now let's talk how to get a mixing point backward. So we are also having two inputs, XI1. We again have this mixing point here, or a mixing point. We have this XI2 which is added here. Here is this mixed signal. And this mixed signal is passing through my transfer element. And the output is the output. Now we want to move this mixing point backwards. So now we do have XI1. 
This is running through GS. Then here back we have the mixing point. Here is something coming out. And here we have this XO. XI2 We have wants to edit afterwards How do I have to treat XI2? Here XI2 is also passing G So I have to pass G here Okay. Suddenly This mixing point is after this transfer element. So you see those transfer elements they can be modified, modified I can get out of a network of transfer elements. Yeah? I can get a new big transfer element. Okay? I can get a new transfer element yeah? with the total transfer function. Let's make one example. Let's make one example. Here. We do have G1. Here. We do have G2. Here is a mixing point. What is coming out here is the output. The output is fed back here. To this mixing point. And here is the input. Okay. However, this is not a standard mixing point. This one is negative and this one is positive. Okay. So, how to solve this? How to solve this? Okay. I just call this here Y, this signal. Y from S. And Y from S is XO from S multiplied by G2 from S. This is this. And this here, I call this XD. This is XI from S minus Y from S. Clear. And this is XI from S minus XO from S multiplied by G2 from S. Okay. And here this XO is XD, this signal, multiplied by G1. And now I just use this function. So this is XI from S minus XO from S multiplied by G2 from S multiplied by G1 from S. Now get, in it, get this in. Yeah. This is XI from S multiplied by G1 from S minus XO from S multiplied by G1 from S multiplied by G2 from S. Yeah. Now let's separate. This is still XO. Now let's separate the variables. So this is XO from S plus XO from S multiplied by G1 from S, G2 from S equals XI from S multiplied by G1 from S. Okay. Now I get this out. So this is XO 
from S multiplied 1 plus G1 from S, G2 from S yeah, is Xi from S multiplied G1 from S. Yeah. And now we're coming to the I just divide this yeah, XO from S equals Xi from S multiplied by G1 from S divided by 1 plus G1 G2 okay so this here and this is my G my total transfer function this here behaves exactly like it would look like this Xi here we have XO and here we have the total transfer function okay so I calculated out of this network, I calculated a complete transfer function. This we can do for any network. This is how we can calculate with transfer function and with different elements inside our network. Yeah, we can summarize them and calculate a total transfer function. That's sometimes very useful. This means if we have if all those things are linear time invariant uh, systems, yeah, then what the total is also linear time invariant system, and we still have the same basic structure of power s power by something, yeah, a polynomial, a polynomial above the the line and a polynomial below the line. It's always the same structure. Okay. And this enables us to develop a theory to just look at this total transfer function, see what is going on. I said this S is a complex variable. Okay. Next time we're talking about what are those parts of this S? What is behind the real part and what is behind the imaginary part? Okay. We'll see, it's quite interesting for us. So, for this video, thank you very much for listening. See you next time. Goodbye.